Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 10 Italian battleship Cristoforo Colombo. Or CC, or Crisco, or Colombo. It's going to be Colombo, most likely for me. It's the Tier 10 Italian battleship, and it finally is released with 10.3's release. 10.3, of course, is early access to the alternative German DD line and the full release of the Italian battleships, which you can try and unlock in game right now for free. Uh, I really enjoy the tier 10. I really enjoyed a lot of the Italian battleships, but this tier 10 is very special in my opinion. Just 16 guns. How many battleships have 16 guns, right? Plus it's got some more unique traits to it. So we'll get into that. Now, as far as the build is concerned, main armament protection, lower chance of flood and fire, improved gun accuracy, faster rudder shift, improved concealment, better rate of fire. For the commander, incoming fire alert, faster turret traverse, a drill and rush, expert AA, emergency repair, concealment, and fire prevention. That is the build. Honestly, I love the build. I use it on pretty much all my battleships. It's really well rounded. It can deal with pretty much any scenario and it deals with it really well. It's also to be considered because Deadeye is getting removed in a patch 10.4. So when it is removed, you're going to have to exist in a world without that skill. It makes sense that I would learn to compensate for it before that. So, C. Colombo. 16 guns. 16 381 millimeter guns. Quad quads. Uh, this will make the French envious because of the quad mount. Uh, and also, it'll make the Soviets envious because this is a battleship with 360 gun turrets. So, it's got a lot of interesting traits that are unique to itself. It's got sap, it's got the exhaust smoke, it's got 16 guns, and it has that 360 gun trait on gun number 3 and number 4. Uh, it makes it really nimble and really aggressive in its play, and I really love pretty much every aspect of the ship. Uh, now, obviously, 16 guns. That's a lot of guns. What's the downside? Gun range, gun reload, Sigma, and the gun caliber. Since the gun caliber is only 381, you're not going to have a lot of overmatch potential. Uh, especially since you're a tier 10. Most of the ships you're playing, they have way too much armor for you to even comprehend that. So you're not going to be firing AP and overmatching and knocking a target out. Uh, your bread and butter is the sap shell. I see players maybe misguidedly firing AP. AP is really a last resort ammo type for the, so the um, Italian battleships. It's just so small of a gun caliber that it doesn't really help you as freak as much or as frequently as sap will because sap obviously has a little bit wider angle of effective damage it if it hits a target it's going to do 30 percent there's no overpin so there's some advantages to using sap against pretty much any target it's more upfront bursty high explosive ex versus something like the thunder which will set fires and it'll have a lot of high explosive damage, but it won't have that upfront. So, sap is definitely the way to go. If you're not going to fire sap, there's no point in playing the Italians. They have far inferior shell gun caliber, uh, gun range, uh, alpha, all that stuff. There's literally no point in playing the Italians if you intend to just fire AP. It really is about that sap shell. Uh, so, we started out on the north side, did some good damage. Obviously, that 20,000 against the Goliath felt very good. And this is a tier 10 battleship. Uh, well, this is a tier 10 battle, where we're in the tier 10 battle ship for the Italians. And, you know what? I've enjoyed playing these guys a huge amount. I haven't had any trouble succeeding. I think I won every single game in my uh, Colombo. It was not that hard, honestly. Uh, yes, it does have some downsides. Obviously, the short range, the reload, the lack of HE, some situations. It does terrible damage against EDs. But it has 16 guns. It has exhaust smoke. It has great AA defense for itself. No one else. 
that 360 gun turret setup is really nice. And, you know, hopefully I'll have a chance to show all the different scenarios where this really shines. Now, we're taking a lot of damage. This might lead you to believe that uh, the armor on this is horrible. It's actually very good. Uh, I would argue that the Italian battleships have probably the second best armor in the game compared to the Soviets' outward-facing armor, of course. Uh, the Germans have really great armor, except for the fact that it has really soft outward. But the Italians, they've got a good base to work with. They're probably the most shotgun of all the battleships in the game. That's a huge deterrent, I'm sure, from many players who would prefer to fire like the, the Thunderer at max range. And in fact, this is a great example of the downside. Since I don't have range, I have to just take what the Thunderer is giving me. So I just have to deal with that. And I'm trying desperately to move outside of his range in time to activate my heal, which we finally are able to do. But it's not without him knocking out a lot of it, and he continuously wants to fire on us. Uh, this is an issue. So, in order to overcome this exact situation, this is pretty much the only option you have, is to avoid his area, or to sail so close to him under exhaust smoke or island cover that he can't possibly get away, and you could knock him out. But as it stands with this situation, the high explosive is just too damaging for me to stay close. And I really wish I didn't have to stay all the way back in order to be effective because the dispersion is definitely shotgun. Absolutely. The worst consistent shells of uh, pretty much any. Now we're going to take a little cheeky shot at that DD, hoping that it w went off before the island affected it. And we actually do, we do get two sap shells. But notice, it does probably 2,000 damage. Sap on DDs is really bad, and the AP is worse. So there's not really a good option for the Italians against DDs. You could obviously fire your gun, but it's going to be an inefficient salvo. You could choose to fire that inefficient salvo at the DD, of course, or you could hold it for a cruiser or a battleship where you have better consistency. So we're sailing over away from the north side, trying to engage these guys. There's a couple cruisers and battleships that are in the area and trying to gauge where this Des Moines is headed out so I can try and lead him in the direction that he's headed. And of course, doing this all away from the enemy and over the shoulder shot, nearly 13,000 damage, yes. If I would have fired AP at that exact same angle, probably would have ricocheted or done almost nothing. So it is important. You can't just, oh, it's a battleship fire AP. No. No, it's actually not what you do. Enemy Wooster is close enough that I'm going to take this shot. And we're aiming at the top of the, the hull, of course, to get the shells down. And, yeah, I'll take a 15,000 with no Citadel. Yes, please. Works for me. Uh, meanwhile, we got an Iowa, uh, sorry, an Ohio... And I think he just fired on us. So we're going to try and drop our speed and turn away. Hoping he misses the Citadel. Of course he doesn't. He hit right where he needed to. And uh, either he did uh, penetration, two penetration, or he got one Citadel and maybe an overpin. <laughs> Funny enough, we take out the Wooster with that shot. And we earn far reach. So I've been using Luigi Sansonetti in my Italian battleships. I think that the extra gun range really helps make it a little bit more comfortable. Plus, if I'm being honest, I just enjoy the Italian battleships more than the Italian cruisers. Uh, we'll see if that continues, but for me personally, I just find the sap mechanic pretty interesting. Just how bursty this really is. Uh, in this Ohio, he is doing so much work to us. We are trying desperately to avoid death. At this point in the game, I felt like there was nothing I could do. I was going to die. He only has to land, what, three shells from any angle, and we're knocked out. Uh, so I'm just hopefully giving ground and using the heal. And at this point, it's like, okay, we could, we could fire our gun. Or we could wait for the Ohio to fire his gun, and then we fire in re uh, response, knowing that he cannot actually fire on us. So I was just going to wait. Wait until the enemy fires all his guns, which he does, and then we load and fire at the top of his hull. 
Uh, and he's also going to take pretty significant torpedo damage in 20,000. It's so chunky. It's so bursty. I can't imagine you not succeeding if you just try and mimic how I'm playing this. You want to aim high. You don't want to aim at the waterline. It's sap shell. It's not going to citadel. You want to aim for the superstructure on the top of the hull, the bow and stern. That's the best location for sap to do the most damage. There's really no reason to locate the shell anywhere else. And you can clearly see it works very well from many different angles and ranges. There's always going to be enough chunkiness that's taken out of the target that makes you feel like, okay, this is, this is worth me continuing this process because eventually he will be taken out. So we're going to use our scout aircraft. Again, highly encourage the scout aircraft. Uh, highly discourage the fighter. This, the Italian battleships have great... Ooh, nice, another great salvo. They have great defensive AA. Horrible AA range. But if they are ever actually attacked by air, they can handle themselves just fine. So there really isn't a good reason to take fighter. Always take scout on uh, the Italian battleships, and especially the tier 10. There, there's no reason for any other. And I'm trying to get an angle shot on this Des Moines, because he is being a little annoying in the center. He does miss the shell. And you can just see the shotgun nature of the ships. It just, the shells just go wherever they want to go on the ships. You just got to hope that they decide to go where you aim. And uh, if they miss badly, do you have enough time and angle and health? For that to matter that's really how you got to get over this dispersion it's it's not going to get much better it's really about using your ship on the right target to have the most benefit and the targets take out the amato great enemy des moines still somewhere at b point um for every ship that we take out the enemy takes out a return and they also have two bases to our one and it was concerned that we wouldn't have a chance to return the favor. So it looked like the Des Moines wanted to head towards the middle of the map. I do think he's going to harass my friendly DD. So in response to that, I wanted to make sure we had enough shells on the target that would punish that, and we definitely did. Uh, I do think, though, unfortunately, he's going to avoid line of sight directly, and it'll happen to be maybe the Stalingrad or another friendly, I, I don't have a clear shot on the Des Moines. Gun velocity is really good. You know, it's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst. It's probably top three, top four on gun velocity. So it's easy to hit your targets. You just have a cap on your range. Um, there are players who might go range in slot six module. Absolutely, that's a fine way to play. Uh, but for me personally, I can make this ship work very well without increasing its range. And uh, I do that partially because I'm taking advantage of the 360 gun turret nature. You can really dip in and dip out. And here's a great, great transition. Because of the situation, we were angled for the Des Moines for port side, but we want to transition to the starboard side to engage the Holland. The back guns basically are in position before the front guns get in position. So it is very simple to have all your guns facing the other direction if you are in that forward facing position. It's of course going to discourage, ooh nice, that was a nice healthy broadside that we needed because the Holland had just taken out a friendly. Uh, but with this ship design, it really encourages you to bow in to every position and to angle and aggressively uh, show a side for all four quad mounts and then go back to a neutral pose. Uh, and really reduce the incoming damage. You don't have a lot of hit points. Hopefully you guys are aware of that. 89,000 on tier 10 is not a lot, but it, it is because of the amount of armor, the 360 gun turrets. You can pretty much dictate the pace of the game from a battleship standpoint. Uh, not every battleship can do that, but you can always not be am ambushed. So that's a nice trait of this Italian ship. Not all the Italian battleships get that, but the tier 10 has that 360 gun turret. So you can pretty much, if you react within 10 or 15 seconds of somewhere on the map or the mini map relocation, it's, it's very easy to have them in position and fire on them. And the angle of fire, very effective, very useful. 
So we're moving towards B, knowing that we need to get a base capture, knowing that I need to get a kill on the Italian cruiser. We do open up our stance, of course, to fire all four gun turrets. And we're elevating the guns, hopefully getting good shell dispersion. We do get good shell dispersion. Now, I could have used smoke there, drop off detection, and he would never have actually returned fire on us, and we put have captured the base there. I'm afraid if I do that, he might take advantage of that and drop off. I just was hesitant in that moment. And plus, it's the last smoke charge. I still feel like there's a lot we have to work on in this. So I didn't want to make that, that decision. And we get a good damage there. But he's still alive. And I, I, I just can't risk another salvo. I have to activate my heal. Uh, of course, he's continuously firing on us. And we're just trying to reduce the incoming. Anytime he fires, we're going to slow our rudder and turn in. Uh, and the nice thing, of course, those gun turrets, man. I, I, it's really impressive mechanic. That, that it's so easy for you to be able to load and fire and whatever side of the ship you'll do a good job. And is this going to kill him? It does end up knocking him out, finally. Uh, and we're nearly able to capture the base. I don't know exactly where the enemy cruisers are. I know the Goliath and uh, Alexander Nevsky are on the other side of this map. Uh, they have just captured C probably 40 or 50 seconds ago, and it does look like one of the two is retreating from that capture. Uh, I would love to capture the space and then go forward. Secondary armament is pretty much 90 millimeter. It's not looking for penetration. It's exclusively looking for fires set. Because secondaries are so poor right now in the game, I would not personally play secondaries. You can obviously see that secondary build is not necessary for success. And, oh, and it also has 152 as well. But secondaries are not necessary for success. I really don't see myself recommending them. Um, I really just like the tankiness. And uh, we unlocked concealed reserves because of the amount of shells they hit. A uh, hundred shells. Very easy to do, actually, with 16. Uh, it feels great. I mean, the amount of damage it can do, yeah, it really shines. Ooh. And uh, Alexander Nevsky knocked out by the Shima. All that remains is the Goliath. Uh, so, low amount of hit points, above average to great armor. Uh, the amount of guns, top top in the, the class, 16, amazing. Sap, amazing shell. Exhaust smoke, fantastic for relocating at the beginning, relocating mid, late, and is this enough to kill him? Are you kidding me? 974 points left. So I'm not going to be the one that kills him. Someone else is going to kill him, and I just get to watch it, of course. Love the chunky alpha of that sap shell. Love the maneuverability. Love the 360 gun turret. It really shines in all the right ways for me personally as a brawling D uh, battleship with, you know, chunkiness in its guns. I really like the experience. I see myself playing a lot of this, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that game. If you did, like it. If you disliked it, please dislike it. Uh, you could subscribe to my channel. Yeah, 3,000 base XP. Woot. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel. We do World Warship videos. You can take advantage of my recruit invite on the screen for North America. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you and have a wonderful day.